about a year ago, uh, we started with a data analytics team. So uh, uh, our board asked me to start with it. How we started it? Well, what we did, uh, we built a data platform within uh, Amazon, so AWS. I uh, recruited uh, five data scientists, and since then we have done 16 projects throughout the company. So it's not only the logistics departments, it's also HR, finance, robotization, everything you can think of within a company, just to try to start with uh, big data analytics. Um, one of the cases we have done and we're currently in, that's one, uh, uh, one of the cases I will uh, show you right now. One thing that's really clear and what we have learned in the last year, uh, big data is not magic. Huh? Some, some people think, well, I hand you over my data and you will find any pattern, all the patterns that are there and you come back to me with all the solutions. That's not the way it works. A sci uh, my scientists, when they have a hypothesis, uh, so they suggest, they suspect there's something in the data that's useful for the company, the first thing they do, they go into the processes. What's happening in the process? So a data scientist, what he actually is doing, uh, he, he needs to know where the data is from, how it's produced, what the quality is. So some of my scientists, they go on a trip, they go by transportation, just see how the data is collected. So that, and they really know, need to know how the process is going on, and why, uh, why the data is collected, how it's collected, and where the faults are. So what we have done, We do about uh, 1.3 million parcels a day in the Netherlands. Uh, E-commerce is really rising, as, as yeah, you heard all the figures, but 1.3 million parcels a day. And we have, uh, the fraud is about uh, less than uh, 1%. But still, that's a lot of parcels. So parcels that, that are being stolen by our own employees. Uh, or in, in combination with our own employees, because sometimes that are uh, people from the outside that are held by our employees. So this was the question, and this is where we always start. We always start with a hypothesis. So not here you have data and see if a pattern, but we think there is something in the data that, that can be useful to us. That's how every project starts. So in our parcel networks, uh, are disappearing, they are lost, just the parcel is gone, or the box is empty and it's filled by a rock or whatever, or just empty. So what we have done is the following. First of all, we identify the process, step by step. Which, what are the steps in the process, and where is data collected in that process? Then you know several things. The first thing you want to know is, where is the area which is most likely to be beneficial or successful. That's the first thing we do. So a lost par parcel can be lost after the first sort. In the Netherlands, when you send out a parcel, it's sorted during the night, then it's transported to the next sorter somewhere in the Netherlands, and there it's sorted for the area around that sorting center. Uh, what we have done then, we, uh, we investigated and we, saw, uh, we thought, after the first sorter, here, we have the best opportunity to find out and to be successful in finding lost parcels. So what we've done, there are two scenarios, the parcel is missing or the content is missing. So we have to simulate or identify. That's the difference in analytics. You have to simulate where the parcel should have been. It's not there, but it should have been. And you have to identify, because you know where the parcel is, but there's nothing in it. There are two different things. So what we've done, here's a scan, here's a scan. So you scan it, transport it, scan it. But here, you don't know where in an element you should scan it. Because it's a black box. And that's where the problem arises, and that's where we build an algorithm. So when there's a scan, 
you expect somewhere in the Netherlands another scan after a certain period of time. But you don't know where. For example, like this one. What we have done, it's called frames, from the data, streaming data, so real-time data, we identify frames. On the basis of the data, we can identify if that parcel was correct. There are parcels around that parcel that have been following the same path because it's from the same origin or has the same uh, requirements. We follow those friends and then we say, hey, we should have had have this scan. We didn't receive it. Yeah. But we think based on the algorithm, it should be there on this time frame. And when it's not there, then a signal goes out to security, they can check the security surveillance images, and they are much faster and much cheaper to identify if something happens. Next to that, because you're much faster, because theft never goes alone, because if it takes longer, more partials will be missing. Well, this is what we have done with an algorithm, and, an, uh, and this is how we, how we did the process. Because when you have the data, first of all, you need the data cleaning and preparation. So you need to prepare all the data. We, have, we use about uh, six data sources. They come together in our Amazon platform, our big data platform. Uh, you, uh, first, by hand, you're going to clean the data, and the cleaning is based on business rules. Because some sorters, you have to get them out because they're not useful for your algorithm. You find it out by hand, and after that you build business rules. But every time ETL, eh, so the cleaning of the data, every time that's done in real time, the algorithm takes out the sorters that are not useful for this algorithm. That's one example. Another example is. Disclose parcels with unlimited scans. Sometimes parcels go wrong. And they're not useful for determining friends. So you take them out in the algorithm. Content missing. This is really interesting. Because we are weighing parcels. So it should be very easy to find out. And you're weighing and the next scan you're also weighing it. And it's uh, when it's gone, probably it's, uh, it's, uh, it has less weight. But the thing is, and that's why it's so important to follow the process as a scientist. It's not only the data, 60% of your work is know what the process is, know what you are doing, know where the data is from, where the data is coming from. From the data it appears there were strange patterns that they couldn't recognize. So what they did, they followed the, the patterns, and they noticed that some parcels are weighed with a box, a special box that is necessary in our sorting center, some, some weren't, and that was just the operator thinks it's necessary or not. The other thing was, uh, not all the boxes were the same in our 21 sorting centers. So, you're weighing, you don't know what to do. But then it's getting really interesting for scientists. How can I identify what sort of uh, box is used or if, a, uh, or if a box is used or not? And that could be found in the data. And that's now put in the algorithm. And with a certain chance, about 85%, they know, the algorithm knows, if it's stolen or not. Is it empty or not? And that's very high if you compare it to that in a, the normal situation. Uh, it was only uh, known when the package was delivered and opened by the customer. It depends, of course, who you see as the customer, the receiver or the uh, sender. But so that, that, that saves a lot of time. Sorry for the Dutch process here. <laughs> so, and what's really interesting, and that's how we. Um, uh, convinced our board, because what you can do with data science, you can say, we build an algorithm, I go back in time one year, 
in my data. I run the algorithm. I know the actuals. And you actually can see how good your algorithm is. And that's really, really convincing for management. That's really convincing. Uh, what it delivered is uh, that we found in 40.1% of all the cases we actually found where something was lost uh, or where something was replaced by a rock or whatever. Another thing is when a customer, a receiver, notified us that something was missing, Normally, it took one hour and 20 minutes to find out where it was lost. Now it will take 2.4 seconds. And actually, uh, also, uh, the lead time was much shorter, of course, because you didn't deliver it. So, from a logistical point of view, it's very interesting because it's, it's for your efficiency. But the next thing is, sometimes you already know that a parcel won't be delivered. So now, Kummer, our commercial department is involved because they say, I can tell the sender now that his, his or her parcel is missing. So then it becomes a commercial benefit. I don't know what's the best thing, yeah? I notify the sender, notify the receiver, but it's something you can discuss with your clients. And that's, that's really convenient. So that are the next steps. Uh, um, the, uh, one of the next steps is uh, what I already explained, that, that is what do, you, what do you want to do commercial with it. The next thing that we are investigating is, is that uh, when our algorithm tracks the fact that the parcel is missing or replaced, we want to make a connection to the actual surveillance videos and that the surveillance video time slot is popped up at the security officer so that he actually directly can see if something is happening. That's the second, the, our first next step. After that, we are looking with uh, Google uh, TensorFlow. We are looking if image recognition and video re recognition can recognize if something is stolen or not. So the actual action. That's, I don't know uh, if it will work, but it's really interesting for our, our scientists. And, and that's what they, uh, uh, we keep them driving by interesting things to do and that's, that's really interesting for them because then all the algorithms are not necessary anymore because then you just used the real surveillance uh, images with an algorithm on those images and you actually can track, track if someone is stealing or not. Uh, 